and welcome everybody. Today we will be going over a lot of well, in depth to prepare ourselves for the certification exam. And in this video, we will be discussing the artisan concept. Artisan is Laravel's command line interface, which has a lot of helpful pre-built commands. To see a list of these commands, simply type in php artisan list. And here we have the names of the commands and a short description of what they do. To get information about each command, simply prepend help to that command. So for example, php artisan help route cache. And here it will give you that same description, the usage and the options. Alternatively, you can always append the help flag instead. So let's go with PHP artisan, maybe migrate dash dash help, and that will give us the same thing. One of the most useful commands available in artisan is Tinker. Tinker is a read eval print loop made specifically for Laravel, which allows you to interact with your application in the command line. To use it, let's go to PHP Artisan Tinker. And here we can interact with the application as if we were writing the code in the application itself. So for example, uh, we can do app models all, and then we get all of our users. In addition to the commands that have already been pre-installed, you can create your own. These will be stored in the app console commands folder, which doesn't appear until you actually create your first command. And to do that, let's run the command php artisan make command followed by the name of that command. So for this example, let's just make a command that says hi. So I'll say hi command, and that will run. And we can see here that the commands folder has been created along with the command itself. Here we can see that we have two properties. We have signature and description. The signature is the name of the command that will be displayed in the list of commands. It will also be how we call this command. So we'll go ahead and change this to uh, say hi. The description is also shown in the list of commands. And maybe we'll change this to give an accurate description. So how about uh, show a friendly now let's check this out the list again so php artisan list we can see our command here as well so we have how we would call the command and then the description then we have two methods within our command class we have the construct as well as the handle method the handle method is what will be called when our command is executed so for it, this example let's just go echo hello and then we'll add php end of line so let's go ahead and run our command in the command line so Let's do php artisan say hi and there you go so it printed out hello so let's spice this up a little bit uh, and maybe we will add an argument and we can do that by simply adding the curly braces and the name of the argument in here as well All right so we'll, we'll go ahead and accept the name we can go ahead and capture it with this and then we'll get the argument and the argument's name is well, name so let's try that one more time in the console. So we have PHP artisan say hi, Brad. And there you go. So it is reading this argument and then we have pushed it back out into the console. But let's try this again. Imagine that, well, we didn't add the argument. What would happen? There we go. Now we have an error. So not enough arguments. So we can see that the name argument is missing. But imagine if we wanted to make this name optional. Well, we can do something here. We can just add the question mark uh, as you would on most of the parameters in Laravel. So let's try that out again. So here, can we do it? Yes. So this will just give us a hello. And then again, the name argument will work as well. We can also add a default argument instead. So perhaps we'll just say there, if we run PHP artisan say hi, it'll say hello there. But otherwise, if we add the name argument, it will accept that. How about if we want to pass an optional field? Well, here we will place that again within the curly braces in the signature, just like the name argument, except this time we'll have two dashes in front and maybe uh, we'll have the name of that argument. So for example, greeting equals, and then we'll give it a description, create a uh, personal greeting. And let's just go back here to the terminal and print this out. So uh, PHP artisan uh, say hi, and let's give it the help flag. So here we can see have options. So we have the argument here uh, and it gives us our default, great. And then under options, we can see that our greeting here has been added and the description is here as well. So that is how we would accept 
the option. Now let's go here to our handle method and use that option. So here, instead of this argument, this would be this option uh, and then we would use our greeting that is the name of it. So let's make this maybe a little bit more interesting. Let's say that our greeting equals, if this exists, right? If that exists, then we use that. Otherwise we'll say hello. And then here, instead of echoing out hello, we can echo out greeting plus maybe we'll give it a space and then we have the name. So let's try that out. Let's say PHP artisan, say hi, Brad. And let's just do our greeting equals, let's good morning. There we go. And actually you don't even need this equal sign right here. Uh, I can just give it a space and say, good morning. And there we go. And finally, if we want to add an option that simply acts as a Boolean, we can do that as well. So maybe here after greeting, again in the curly braces, maybe we'll add emphasis, right? Uh, and then down here below, we will say that punctuation, punctuation equals if we have this option emphasis. So if that exists, then we'll add an exclamation point. Otherwise, it will just be a period. Look at our greeting again. So echo greeting name, and then we'll have the punctuation. All right, now let's try that out in the console. So we have good morning, and then let's add emphasis. There we go. Good morning, Brad. And otherwise, if we do not have it, We'll just add that period. And so if you're running this once or twice, running it in a cron job, then having the full names for greetings or emphasis is fine. But if you're running this several times a day, then you may want to have, add a shortcut. And we can simply do that by adding the pipe character. So let's say maybe a G would be for greeting. And then here again will be E for emphasis. Then all we would have to do is run pretty much the same as before. Let's do PHP artisan say hi. Brad. And instead of maybe two dashes in green, we'll do one dash in G and we'll say good afternoon. Uh, and then one dash. And then we have the E for the emphasis. And there we go. So good morning, Brad, with uh, these shortcuts. Finally, if we want to perhaps greet several people, then we can accept an array. So here, maybe instead of there, let's just add the asterisk right here, which will give us an array. And then here, maybe we should do a for each, right? So for each, and then it'll be this argument name. As name. Actually, since that is, since that is an array, I'll change the name to names because that will make more sense. And then let me push this all up here. All right, so instead of that, let's do name. And then maybe this argument will change that to name. So we will just simply loop over the argument names and then we'll, we'll, we'll add that. So let's go back here. Let's just say PHP artisan, say hi. Maybe we'll just do Brad, uh, maybe we'll do Wes, G, and then we'll just say good morning again with emphasis. There we go. So good morning, Brad, good morning, Wes. So then we have uh, looped over those names as well. While these are silly examples, I want to note that in this handle method, we can inject any sort of dependency. So this would allow us, for example, to reach into the database, find any of the users that, I don't know, have the birthday today, uh, and then send these users an email wishing them a happy birthday. Hooking these sorts of commands up to cron jobs is where you find the real power in them. All you have to do is go here to app console kernel, and then under the schedule method, add that command. So in my case with the say hi command, of course this really wouldn't make so much sense to do it, but all you would have to do is add the command right here and then set your schedule. So this could be on an hourly basis. Maybe we would ha have it at daily at 9 a.m. Another use case for these commands is if you have to do some sort of repetitive task in your own code. It can, for example, be used to create a customized boilerplate. So imagine you have certain sections of your website that need a model controller migration and web route. And for each of these sections, you need to generate this information each time. We can create stubs and generate this code as well. So to publish these stubs, all we would have to do is run the command php artisan stub publish. Then we get this folder right here with all of our stubs. Then with these stubs, we can either copy them and extend them or just leave them as is. So let's continue with the example of creating this boilerplate code. Let's create a command for that as well. So PHP artisan make command and let's just say make model command. Of course, this could be as complex as you want, but I'll just create a simple example. 
So in here, we need to think about the command name. And remember, let's do PHP artisan list. So remember that we already have perhaps a make model command. All right, there. So that's kind of our name spaced. Uh, so let's maybe instead of use make, uh, we'll write personal. Uh, you could probably write the name of your company there or the name of your project, whatever. So something that isn't make in this case. So maybe we'll do make and then here we'll do model. All right, so that will be the name of our command. And then let's give it a description. So let's say create a custom model. Great. And then maybe let's just go ahead and view that. So let's run PHP artisan list. And we can see that under personal, there we go. So personal model, and this will help us to create a custom model. Okay, so we have the name already set in the description as well. Let's take a look at how we could handle this. Let's take a look at the stubs. Let's just look at the normal model stub right here. Okay, and maybe for the namespace, so maybe we'll put that in app models. And maybe what we wanna change here is just the class itself. So let's say our class is this argument class and so we'll have to accept that argument up here above so we have that class argument and then what do we want to do so we have the, our template right so our template was in within the stubs folder and then it was just model.stub and then let's figure out what do we want to replace right so we had let's go back here so we had this class here right here so that is Maybe all we want to replace at the moment. So let's copy that, come back here and put that in. And then what do we want to replace it with? So that will be our class, right? So we want to put the name of the argument and we'll, we'll put that into our template. Now, our final compiled code uh, will be just the string replace. And we, what will we be replacing? That'll be the to replace. What will we be replacing it with? Replacements. And where will we do this? That will be within the template. Uh, and then finally, we have to put this file, right? So where will we be putting it? Uh, let's say we wanna put it in the app models folder and let's get the class and then we'll do .php. And what will we be putting there? That will be that final compiled code. So we'll run PHP artisan personal model and then we'll give it a class name. Let's just call it reading, sure. And there we go, you see models greeting and it changed our class for us. So again, this was a simple example, but you can really take this as far as you want, creating uh, maybe even your own stubs, doing multiple stubs at the same time, however you want. Console, kernel for just a second and take a look at the commands method down here below. Note that this is actually where the commands are being loaded. So we can see that we are loading them through so the directory and then going to the commands folder, which is right here. So that is how uh, we're getting all these commands loaded. But we also have a second place, right? So require base path roots, uh, then console.php. So let's check that out for a second. Roots console.php. So here we can see an example command here, which is the inspire command, which if we run it is php artisan inspire and we simply get an inspirational quote. And so for simple commands, uh, we could perhaps put them in here. So let's create our own and take a look at it. So artisan command, so the actual name of the command will go right here. Let's just say that we're building, uh, I don't know, a project. And so then we have our function. Maybe we'll accept that project as a parameter. And what will we do with this? We'll put this info and we'll just echo out our project, right? So let's say building, our project, end quote. And then maybe the purpose is that is the description that we had before. And so let's just say that uh, the purpose is to build a project. So now how can we use this? Uh, let's just do PHP artisan uh, build master plan. All right, so it's building master plan, for example. So while this is another way of creating these commands, I would really limit this to very simple commands as filling this file with Several commands would be, and especially large commands, could become overwhelming uh, and difficult to read. So at that point, it's really best to separate the commands into the individual files as we have created earlier. We have already talked about a few basic ways that a user can pass information into our command. We have these arguments as well as options that the user passes when running the command in the console. 
This is fine if we need relatively few inputs to run the command. However, once the number of inputs grows, or once they become a bit more complex, we will want to start to gather this information in a different way. Luckily, there are quite a few options to do that. And the most basic case is that we can just ask. So after the user has run the command, then this question will pop up for them to reply. So for example, this ask is your name. Then for example, we can just say echo, thanks. Um, and let's maybe name this, maybe we won't say name, we could just say uh, user, thanks user. It was very personal, right? Thanks user. Okay, and so let's try that out. That'll be the same thing as we had before. Clear this. So let's just say PHP artisan, say hi, Brad. Let's say, what's your name? Well, my name is also Brad. I'll just say James right here. Uh, and say, thanks, James, then hello, Brad. And then for sensitive information, we can also hide the input value while the user is typing by using secret. So let's just say maybe password equals this secret. Uh, what is your password? And then here, maybe what we'll do is echo your password is, and then string replace, whoops, no, string repeat maybe, and we'll just kind of give them the number of characters. Uh, maybe this isn't the best example, but uh, you get my point. So yeah, let's say we'll get the, the length of the password and then we'll just write these little asterisks afterwards. Uh, and then maybe we'll just do PHP end of line. There we go. So let's try that out. I uh, say, hi, Brad. So what is your name? Say, James, what is your password? That. So your password is blank. All right, we can also ask for a confirmation, which will result in a Boolean. So let's give that a try. So we would just do this, confirm, are you happy? Let's try that one out. And actually, let's just say happy equals, are you happy? And then maybe we'll say echo. So if this is true, let's say I am happy. Otherwise, I am sad. And let's try that out. So are you happy? So the default here is no. Well, that's maybe negative, but let's go with yes. And then we have, uh, I am happy. We can also anticipate the user's answers and give them auto completion hints. This, however, still allows the user to insert a value that is not part of the auto completion uh, examples. So for example, here we can do this anticipate and the question will be uh, maybe where are you from? And then we'll pass uh, an array of answers. So we'll just say Canada and maybe Portugal here as well. And let's just call this for country, for example. And then we'll, then we'll simply echo out, uh, you are from country, we'll add the end of line. Okay, so let's give that a shot. All right, so where are you from? Let's say, start with CA and then you get Canada. If I start with PO, you get Portugal. So I'll just write Canada, say you're from Canada. All right, there we go. We can also force the user to select an option from a few of the options. So in this case, we can do this uh, choice and we could say maybe which is more delicious and we can pass here uh, again, an array of, in this case, uh, maybe food, right? So maybe we'll just say uh, arancini in one or olive a la in another one, so you are forced to choose. Let's just say food equals that. And what we'll do is echo out uh, and then we'll put the food in here as well. Incatenate PHP end of line. Fine, let's try that. So let's say arancini. So your favorite food is arancini. Then finally, imagine that you want to give the user a multiple choice question with a default. So let's just say, maybe great clubs equals this choice. And then within here, um, we'll have the question. So name a great football club. And then we'll have the array of options. Let's just say maybe Bayern Munich, we have Barcelona, and maybe we have Benfica. And let's just say we have a default in here. And let's say our default is two. Remember this is zero indexed. So if you don't like anything, we're gonna give you Benfica. And then the max attempts equals three. And then allow multiple selections equals true. And again, you don't actually have to write out the name of these uh, parameters. You could leave it like this, uh, but I think it is much more legible if you leave them in there. So let's try that and then since this is an array, 
This will give you an array. Let's just do a far dump. So let's do great clubs and okay. So let's give that a shot. All right, so name a great football club. So we can do zero, one, two, and it'll give us that array, right? So all three, or if we don't select anything, it'll just give us Benfica. For the inputs that are gathered after initially running the command, to gather this data, we can simply set these to a variable and use it later on in the handle method as we have been doing. Then for each argument uh, and option, entered in the initial command, we can gather them through this option or this argument. But imagine if we have a lot of arguments and a lot of options and we want to grab them all at once, we could simply use this arguments and that will grab all of the arguments or alternatively uh, this options and that will grab all of the options. When logging to the console, you can of course use plain PHP such as echo and var dump, which is what I have been using or Laravel commands such as dump. In addition to these, we have several commands with styled text, our info, error, line, and alert. Then if you wanna create a new line, you can also always do uh, this output new line. So let's give these a try. There we go. So you can see how echo uh, looks just like normal text. Dump looks like this. Info, error, line is basically echoing. Uh, and the alert gives you this styling as well. Now, if we wanna get fancy, we can also print out a table. So note here that the headers will be an array and the rows in this case will be an array of arrays. So if you are putting in manually, which you probably will not be, but in this case, it will be an array of arrays. Otherwise, if you're pulling it from the database, imagine we're getting the user and we're going to get all of their uh, names and emails, we'll just need to push that to an array. So let's try this out, uh, maybe with the default styling here first. And all right, so this is really what we would get. So write the name uh, in this default styling. Note that they have quite a few other styles. Uh, they have borderless, compact, symphony style guide, box, box, double. Uh, let's just try these out, see what we get. And there you go. So if you prefer one of these other stylings, then yeah, go ahead and use that. Finally, if you want to be super fancy, you can also add a progress bar. The basics of this is that you just need to create the progress bar and pass it some sort of number. This must be an integer. So in this case, I'm just counting these letters for an example, but you may want to count the number of users. Then you should start the progress bar. And then for each of these steps, you will need to advance and then finally set it to finish. So let's give this a shot. There you go. So we have five letters in here. It's going and you can see how that progresses. If we go to the kernel inside app console folder, we can see the commands method. This is where our commands are registered for the application as we discussed earlier. Note that out of the box, Laravel is looking for our commands inside of this commands folder or inside of the routes console.php. We've already examined how to add commands to each of these locations. Just want to note that you can always add let's say another folder, let's call it Brad's commands uh, right in there. And then we can add it right here as well. So if you have a lot of commands and you need to reorganize them, you can always do that. Additionally, you could register the commands up here in the commands property. So for example, you just say commands, let's say, there we go. So we have the say hi command, right? And then we just have to pass the class and that would work as well. Now that we have our commands set up and running in the terminal, how can we get them to run in our program? Well, we've taken a quick look at how we can run them in a cron job a bit earlier. We simply add the command here within the schedule method. For example, uh, our command here would run daily at 9 a.m. However, we can also run these commands uh, in a web route or in a controller. But let's just check out the web route to see what we can do here. So for example, in here, let's just add a route. Let's just say, I don't know, send email and we'll pass it a function and then add our command. Imagine we have this already set up, uh, which will be to send the email. Then we're passing the arguments uh, and options right here as well. So we can do that. We can actually also do this uh, in one line. So instead of having that within an array, 
we can simply add that to the command itself. So note that if we're calling them directly as we have right here, this is kind of the, the same negative effect as if we're sending an email. So it would slow down anything else that is going on. This would take up memory from the server. So what we could do instead, if we just want to queue them, uh, is use the queue method. And finally, if we wanted to call a command inside of another command, then we can just use uh, this call and then enter the command in here. So imagine we are sending out the email, it would be email send. And then again, we can pass an array. So we have maybe the user is one, uh, etc. Or we can just add that here within the command, right? So that would send it to the first user. So this is Laravel's Artisan Console in a nutshell. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write in the comment section below. And if you're planning on taking the certification exam, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Take care.